Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Popsicle, a sweet new show where I guess and I lap up what's new with pop culture. My name is RJ from RJ Smooth Rocks, and today we're doing one of my favorite episodes of the podcast. It's time for our book club episode, and we have back literary empress herself, Allie. Hi, Allie. Welcome back. It's me again. <laughs> it's me again. It's a hello. <laughs> so happy to be back i like this episode because it's like a guaranteed a same guest every time i don't have to scramble <laughs> it's nice nice and planned and you also you also like me as a person yes absolutely yeah <laughs> i value our time together because okay good it's good. not like we we talk at all <laughs> never today we are back in our book club um, and we have a very special book this week. We will be unwrapping the novel, What's Mine and Yours by Naima Coster. Mm, yes, love it. Love it. Uh, so I am going to read you the TCDE to Didn't And yes, I'm just going to read the jacket uh, because someone worked very hard to write this. So we should honor their work. You yeah. Know? Why, you know, why, why duplicate work when it's already been done? Exactly. A community in the okay, is it Piedmont? 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 You know what? I didn't look that up. I would say I would say Piedmont. Piedmont. You gotta say it <laughs> a little mad. So a community in the Piedmont of North Carolina rises in outrage as a county initiative draws students from the largely black east side of town into predominantly white high schools on the west. For two, for two students, G and Noel, the integration sets off a chain of events that will tie their two families together in unexpected ways over the next 20 years. On one side of the integration debate is Jade, G's steely, ambitious mother. In the aftermath of a harrowing loss, she is determined to give her son the tools he'll need to survive in America as a sensitive, anxious young black man. On the other side is Noel's headstrong mother, Lacey May, a white woman who refuses to see her half-Latina daughters as anything but white. She strives to protect them as she couldn't protect herself from the influence of their charming but unreliable father, Robbie. When G and Noel join the school play meant to bridge the divide between new and old students, their paths collide, and their two seemingly disconnected families begin to form deeply knotted, messy ties that will shape the trajectory of their adult lives. And their mothers, each determined to see her child inherit a better life, will make choices that will haunt them for decades to come. As love is built and lost and the past never too far behind, what's mine and yours is an expansive, vibrant tapestry that moves between the years from the foothills of North Carolina to Atlanta, Los Angeles, and Paris. It explores the Ooh. unique organism that is every family, what breaks them apart, and how come how they come back together. Whew, that was a mouthful. I feel like I've never <laughs> realized how long the jacket copy was. <laughs> so, friends... Get ready. <laughs> Get ready for this discussion of what's mine and yours. We're going to go ahead and start with the sweet. Um, I think overall, what I really loved about this book is from this jacket, you would think this is going to be like kind of like little fires everywhere type thing where it's like you are just constantly in this like uh this like one event that is like very important to the book but it doesn't really happen <laughs> until like halfway through it's barely mm -hmm. met. we're barely actually at the topic of the integration it's more about fully like the waves of that one event and that one kind of like instance that it kind of like threw me for a loop, but in a good way, because I was like, oh, uh, yeah, I thought this was going to be very like charged in a way that it's going to be very intense. Like you're always going to be like, you know, Atticus finching it like we, you know, you're constantly like reading about the fight. But it really is more about like a family drama. It is more about these two families lives. And like that, that portion is just one intersection that they have that fully kind of like ripples throughout since that 
uh, event. So I was very actually, I was actually really surprised at how it was packaged because it ended up being more of a, I ended up being more invested in the people around the event because Mm -hmm. that's kind of how I came through the story first. I was like with them first before the, you know, big political event that happened. Yes. I do. I do want to say that, um, just side note, it is very on brand. I think for me to have picked this book after our first two books, and then for me to come in and be like, we're going to read a book about racism and intergenerational trauma. (laughs) Yes, it is. It is very on brand friendly. (laughs) Um, I love this book. And I think what you're saying about the characters, I think one of the things that I really loved the most um, throughout the entire narrative was how she played with the viewpoints of the characters. Um, I think a lot of times in books, it's not uncommon to have books that are told from different perspectives, but I think it really struck me in the scene when, spoiler, Noelle has gone to get an abortion and she's sitting with Jade Mm -hmm. in the room and the perspective actually shifts within in the scene. So you're seeing what Noelle is feeling. You're seeing what Jade is feeling. And I just thought that was so unique and it was such a powerful way to sit in a scene and instead of feeling things at different times or like finding out later, you were feeling all of the emotion in the scene at one time. And I thought it was a really powerful way because it is, this book is so much about, um, what other people are thinking and how other people are are justifying their actions. And to get that all mm-hmm. at once, I really, really enjoyed. Yeah. I um the whole idea of kind of getting into the intertwining of everything and yeah, seeing things from different viewpoints. You're right. It's not new. We have seen this on other stuff before, but like the last book well, at least the most memorable book that I've read that is like that, that was like, actually like, it was actually hard for me to keep up was the hours because I was just like, I don't know. There was just something about it that it didn't make it feel like approachable. I was also probably reading it too young, but I feel like for here, the different viewpoints really were paying off because like at the start of the book, you get the viewpoint from Ray, who is a person that really is only in this book in that first chapter. Mm-hmm. After he's gone in the first chapter, you almost like savor that chapter with his viewpoint because it makes an impact like through the, throughout the rest of the story. And every time he's brought up, you're like, I know exactly what type of person he was because I read that first chapter with him. So I totally understand why his lack like why him not being in the life of his kid and his uh his girlfriend means so much because he was like a a really good like presence in their lives that you do miss him so I thought that like by giving you the viewpoints of of people that are always being talked about in the book you kind of like have an understanding a bigger deeper understanding of why people are frustrated by other people's actions. And like, that was the thing that I kept going back. I'm like, I obviously I want to hate Lacey May so much. Right. But it's like, but I know what she went through. So I'm like, I, it's so hard to like, be like, well, I'm not a fan of you because I just, I know that she's only acting through like the trauma that she's experienced. So it's one of those things where it's like, it's making you actually think about how, what people go through. I'm like, Oh, I just wanted to, I didn't sign up for this. I was, it was very impressive and like very written, like written very well that I was just like, wow, it's just, it feels really seamless going through. Yeah. Different viewpoints. I think too, uh, the thing about Ray is that it was just really smart for her to do that because this book is so much about ripple effects and really Mm -hmm. the rest of the book wouldn't make sense if you didn't have a good understanding of Ray. You wouldn't, you wouldn't understand you know, why G is the way he is. You wouldn't understand Jade as a character. You really wouldn't understand like Robbie and his family and how important like it, it's. And so it's it was very smart of her to include that and to have him be a person that. It's it is like very devastating that, you know, he dies and, that you know, we get to know this person mm-hmm. that has so much 
there's so much life that he didn't get to live. I think um, one of the things, cutting to the end of the book, one of the things that broke my heart the most was when Nelson was – he, he when he went to Jade's house at the end of the book and he was like mm-hmm. I'm older now than my dad would ever be yeah. you know and and having that reflection and and seeing that kind of um the effect that that kind of thing had on his entire life and had on the entire community so yeah yeah and the fact that like because he didn't have he didn't he his his father's presence wasn't there when he was growing up. He didn't realize how badly it would affect him when he becomes a father or like almost becomes a father and loses that opportunity. And it completely knocks him out of, you know, who he is. Like he ended up doing things that he wouldn't have done, but because he never had that like presence of a father, which I'm not saying that like, you know, everyone needs to have a father figure, but because Jade fought so hard to, make sure his father was never mentioned because she didn't want him to be hurt that like this person, I want you to remember this person that isn't here anymore. It ended up kind of like, like you said, rippling for him being like, I never had that experience. So I never knew that it was going to be okay. So I ended up being like a a fool Mm -hmm. (laughs) for years. So I also think what was special isn't the right word, but what was, um, and interesting is not the right word to me either, but this book had a lot of, uh, I had a lot of mirroring of my my own life in the sense of um, North Carolina, the community in North Carolina being very similar mm-hmm. to South Bend. And I actually, I had, I oh, told really? Adam, I was like, I think that you should read this because the whole... Uh, the the city itself that they're in is this city that had once been very industrious, had once been really great, and had since kind of taken a downturn and was experiencing this mm-hmm. kind of revitalization at the cost of gentrification. And also right. at the center of it was this new kind of schooling busing plan, which is something that happened in South Bend um, when oh, I was probably about I didn't know that. 10, 11, um, was that they completely redid the districting. They had removed one of the high schools and they had, and, and it's interesting because I don't remember, I, I was too young to know like what the public response to it was, but it was a situation that would have been very similar of like mixing very different parts of the city together. And I think the other part mm. of it that I, I did really love was that this particular high school that they go to is this performing arts magnet school, which again is very similar to to where I very I grew similar up to what you guys high yeah. school. And I <laughs> and and I loved I loved the idea of them coming together and Noel kind of trying to make the play this safe space of look at we can all be in this space together and come together and make this this great thing. Um, and it doesn't matter where we're coming from. Obviously part of it backfires because Beckett is the lowest of the low. Um, But I, I, a lot of it, I did find myself feeling like it was um, the circumstances, not like the personal narratives and stories, but the circumstances of, of where the characters were. I felt like it was really interesting for me to read and think about where I grew up and, and the effects that similar things might have had happened. Yeah, I am um, thinking about like Noel. I think like if this was in a different media form, you, Noel would be kind of like the Juno type, you know, of mm-hmm. like rebelling, um, but for like a good cause, obviously, but or like for a better cause, because she's definitely like seeing that like her mom is racist and that her mom is making these terrible decisions. But like, I think there it was really interesting to kind of see how Noel's rebellion like formed Um, initially just kind of like to rebel, just not just being away from her family situation. But then it kind of ended up being more of like her own mission to try and like um, kind of like show it to her mom, which I thought like I earmarked it the, that like confrontation when she runs away um, after like the, the incident that happens to G and, Um, He ends up getting assaulted because of his involvement and she runs away from home. And there's that moment with Lacey May and Hank and she's just like, and Hank is is even like 
what's more important for you to mm-hmm. be correct in this situation and fight for what you're what you think is right or your daughter and like mm-hmm. i i think that's kind of like my favorite part sometimes about cuz i don't really like a lot of like high schooly type stories because it's like i don't want to think about high school anymore <laughs> i'm trying to move on um but I, there are poor, there are some stories that i do appreciate where it has kind of like a bigger meaning and it, it this was definitely one of them where it's like at that moment, she did have to choose whether if this this whole ordeal of trying to fight against this like integration so big that she's willing to like lose her daughter for it. And even though obviously like this family is very complicated and there's a lot of mistakes that you can't forgive easily. Um, it was it was very. Yeah, it was fulfilling to see that come through, but it was also like, oh, but like, I totally still understand. Like, yes, you can still, you know, make good, you can have good moments and make good decisions sometimes, but it's like, how do you counteract years of just not being good, <laughs> not being great? Yeah, I had so. a really hard time with Lacey May. I I, I think I, I wasn't as forgiving to her as, as you might have been, yeah. um, but I did uh, what I did really enjoy was the contrast between her and Jade and looking at how they they mm-hmm. both took their own personal trauma with their significant others and then uh, how they decided to deal with it. Um Pass it, yeah. You know, and and for them to make these alliances like Jade making the alliance with Lynette and and Lacey May with Hank and and seeing how, you know, these two women made different choices to care for their children. Um, and mm-hmm. and what I think what I think is most interesting about it to me is that they're both making these decisions for their children and they're saying, I'm doing this because I want what's best for their children and their children are turning around and saying, this isn't what I want. Yeah. And I think that's what makes it because that's such a um, a persistent thing of parents when when they're doing something that might not be popular that, you know, someone might not agree with. And they're like, well, I'm doing this for my child. And the child is like, well, I don't want you to be doing this. Please don't do it. You know? And it's just a really interesting, um, again, look at the motive motivations and, and, and reasonings behind the characters. I'm curious what you think about the three sisters, because I love a good three sister trope. I love the Chekhov play. I love, charmed (laughs) i love it when there are three powerpuff girls like i love when there are three sisters involved because the sanderson sisters the sanderson sisters (laughs) it's just a fun trope where like yeah personalities manifest because of the the relationship of three women (laughs) like it's Mm -hmm. very specific and i'm curious to be like i'm curious to see what you thought of the sisters and who you are like who do you think you are oh those three I think I'm probably Diane, but want to be Noel. <laughs> I literally. <laughs> yeah, same. Is that that how you feel too? I think, like, or that's what you thought back, I was going to say. I, I both. I actually okay. was. I actually thought you were going to say Noel because just of how. But I understand the. Diane tendencies and all of us of like, I just want to get through, like, I don't want to rip the family apart. That's not mm-hmm. the goal, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and Diane, okay. Now that I'm thinking about it, I think I am Diane too, because Diane was fully like, I can't even bring up the fact that I'm a lesbian because I'm trying to deal with my family almost like ripping apart because they all hate each other. Like putting herself in the least priority Mm -hmm. to try and fix a family that isn't even like trying like they all know that diane's trying to fix everything but they're not even like helping her they don't want to (laughs) so yeah um yes i feel like i am diane in that way and i i yeah and i i was gonna say noel for you just because i know that you are very much like you know (laughs) want to be your own person (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah um I did love the dynamic and I do I do think that it's I think that's 
a lot of times when we have stories of like siblings who go through a difficult upbringing, I think what we more often see portrayed is the siblings who are so close because they're like, we got through it together and we're closer than ever. Mm -hmm. And so I liked being able to see this kind of fractured picture of a family and them actively trying to figure out what it means to come back together and be sisters again and how to relate to one another. Um, Right. I thought was really interesting to see. And um, Margarita was just so, so messy. Like textbook (laughs) messy. Just so messy. Like look at a dictionary of like messy (laughs) noun. The character of Margarita in the novel What's Mine and Yours by Naima Costa. Margarita Ventura. Margarita Ventura. Ugh. Um, I am interested. I am also curious what you think about like the father's relationship with the three sisters. Like, mm-hmm. I think there's that idea of like, obviously the because Margarita is the youngest. Obviously, the oldest is like no, she's the middle. When you're the oldest, oh, she's the middle. She's the middle. Oh, yeah, Diane's the youngest. But there's always that like the sisters are. All, all aware of the situation, but choosing like what, what they want to be like, no, this is what I'm keeping with. So like, obviously Margarita is still very close to the father. Noel, even though sees ends at, is not at the same like wavelength as her mother still also like, does not like her father, you know, like there's just very, it's just very interesting to see like how they each interact with Robbie that I thought was very very interesting especially how Lacey may reacts with robbie like it's like it must be i mean this man must be gorgeous Mm -hmm. (laughs) this man must have some sort of pull that like but that's the thing i think it's more of like self-hatred in Lacey may's part it's like she hates herself for being so smitten with this man but it's like if you just like i don't know i feel like when i was reading it i was like just I don't know I I wanted to see it work like I wanted to see her try to make it work but I think she just hated the hate was so deep that she was like but I can't be with someone that's not white like it's like Mm -hmm. girl oh my god you're making it worse for yourself and for your family by like being so true to your own hatred Mm -hmm. yeah I think what what I loved about the relationships with with Robbie, with the dad, Margarita's, she did, you, you got the sense that she had the best relationship with her dad, but it was still curated. It was it, like the yeah. rest of her life. It was very much, she was making it, the. she had in her mind how she wanted her relationship with her dad to be. And that's what she set about doing, was creating the relationship that she wanted. I think... Noel mm-hmm. was very much just a person. I, I think that in the sense that Noel and I are probably very similar where we're just like, you're not a good person and I don't want to involve myself with you. Like it's very black right. and white. Yeah. There's no gray there. There's no like, I understand what's going on. You're just like, okay, well I'm done. And I think Diane is probably the most realistic about like, my dad is who he is, mm-hmm. the drug addict. Sometimes he'll be here and sometimes he won't. And we can't expect anything from him. Um, right. And so again, I, I think it's, it was really clever how she portrayed each of the relationships, especially in relation to the actual characters of the women. Would you have stayed with Robbie or would you, would you have said, Hank, let's, let's. (laughs) I think I would have said no to both. I think I would have said no to both. I think I would have, I would have let myself be with Robbie longer, I think. I but think- I think it's just because I am a I am a person that like I want to fix things. So it probably would have been bad at the end, but I think I would have stayed with Robbie the long because I really thought Hank was gonna turn out to be a terrible person. Yeah. I'm telling you, I thought Hank was gonna pull some like uh that one movie with Stanley Tucci and um, the lovely Ronan. bones. <laughs> Yes, oh my God, I thought RJ. something that no. man was going to have. I really thought, I really thought Hank was going to like kill people. I was, yeah. it, it was like bad from the beginning. So yeah. I was like, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't blame Noel for being like, who is this man? Yeah, no, I don't <laughs> blame I anyone. I think, 
I think what it would what would have been interesting is that obviously Robbie went off to prison and he didn't provide any support to Lacey May or his daughters at all. But then when he got out right. of prison, and I think when he when they could have been a support system and seen what was possible, they weren't that for him. And I'm not, yeah. I don't blame them. I'm not like you should have been there for him because obviously, you know, he went off and did this thing. But I think it it mm-hmm. would have been interesting again to see what that life would have been if he had come back to his wife and kids and they had been able to make it work, work on it together. Yeah. Um, I'm going to tell you about my favorite part of the book. Yes, please. And it is Hot Farmer Bailey. <gasps> Eco Farmer Bailey. Eco Farmer Funny. Bailey. Now let me I need to ask you, when you read novels like this and mm. like sex comes up, are you yes. still kind of like e like does that still happen to you? <laughs> Cuz it did for yeah. me. They're like, "Oh." <laughs> I'm I'm more oh. I'm yeah, I'm more of a clutching oh. my pearls than tee I'm more of like, "My stars." Like <laughs> Yeah, because I'm like, I want to keep reading how I want to know how, how it feels. (laughs) Please tell me more. I know. But truly, the minute that they started describing Bailey, who is uh, Ruth's son, Mm -hmm. as like, oh, yeah, he just started owning a farm. As soon as I saw the word farm, I was like, oh. Oh. Noelle, you are having a great chapter today, honey. This Noelle, is going to be a good chapter for you. <laughs> you will be having Bailey tonight. Yes. <laughs> and what are you having for dinner, ma'am? Um, the farmer. I'll take the farmer. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I had I had such a fun time reading the chapter because also, like, there is something beautiful about like everyone has that fantasy right of like 10 years later like seeing like you know the people that you may have in in the, i know like right before this chapter they like had that conversation like back in high school and it didn't seem like they had like a chemistry but it was very suspect suspicious of like hmm why are they showing me this conversation right now between between these two people um are they is it going to come back and it did and you know what it was good for everyone so <laughs> When did you know that Nelson was G? I think the first time I feel I'll be honest when I when I when that reveal happened I was like, "Oh my god." It, that's that was actually when I started crying. I started crying at that moment and mm. then cried for the rest of the book. For now, the rest now, of the book. For the rest of the book, RJ, thank you. During the sex scene, I was crying. <laughs> His, his, his farmer hands. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, when it's Nelson and G. Um, now that I'm a couple days removed from it, I'm a little bit upset that I didn't realize it sooner. I think when I first oh. read, when I first read the email and he said something about, I'm still the same like little boy who couldn't remember his lines. Mm-hmm. That was when I was like, Wait a minute. <laughs> but this is this is like G. I think that was when I started to be like Is there more going but his on? His name's here? not G. I know, I know. So And it's not even I I was like, there's not even a G in Nelson. So how could I <laughs> Oh my god. When did you know? It was when so I had the inkling when it was Nelson's chapter because I was like, okay, wait, okay. Because I was like, I didn't think that we were going to talk, uh, we were going to go into that point of view. But when mm-hmm. we did, I was like, hmm, hmm, let's see. This is the only other black man in the story so far. And <laughs> he seems to be very in his head. So maybe they're the same person. Okay. Um, It wasn't until I want to say we were in the present and Noelle, someone asked Noelle about Nelson and she said 
and like and was like, while you're here, are you gonna visit his your mother in law? And then she was like, they don't have a good relationship. And I was like, oh, it's Jade. <laughs> see, see, what I thought was going to happen was I thought that she had – in my mind, it was going to be that she had lost touch with G and then in going back to visit her mother that she was going to reconnect with him and they were going mm. to fall back. That's what I thought was going to happen. Very so, hallmark. Yeah. Yes. It's not what happened. And I was, I did, I did, I did really, really like the way that she did the reveal though. I thought it was really, I think so too. Yeah. Really well done. I think like if I, maybe it's just, I've been privy, privy to other books and pieces of media that does this. So I was kind of like, uh, it was always just like, I bet it's him. I bet it's G. So Throughout my reading experience, I was just trying to like prove that to myself. So I it ended up being like I was trying to hunt for more clues. So when it came out, I, when I finally got to that part, I was like, ah, yep, there it is. I am the easiest person to shock. I don't think there's a single <laughs> plot twist that I've ever seen coming. <laughs> In all forms of media. Movies and books should hire you as like target audience because you will you will process that media exactly how they want it yes. to, and they're like, yes. "I had no idea." Yes, if they ever like Hollywood producers, if you need someone in a focus group that is guaranteed to react the way and to show it on you her want. face, me, I I will be shocked every time, and it will be very evident that I didn't know that was coming. Can you do a quick reel for us so I can just clip it and put it on your website? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> My favorite That's part so about good. that, I don't know. Thank you. That's so good. <laughs> My favorite part about that is that I'm looking, I guess, at a person who's supposed to be sitting next to me. I guess, but I guess I, it's I, a group. I, I guess almost, you watch it together. I, I almost exclusively consume media by myself, so I don't know who I would be looking at. <laughs> <laughs> just looking around. I'm just like. Is there is there anyone else here? Is that another <laughs> surprise that's going to happen? That there's someone in my home. Oh my god! Well, we found your future career path. I don't oh, know what to tell you, gosh. Allie. I think we figured it out. <laughs> oh my god! There, it's already thirty minutes, and we have not talked about the sticky. So let's quickly talk about the yes. sticky. Okay. <laughs> Um, um, there were a couple of things that I thought was a little sticky and I even texted it to you when, when I kind mm -hmm. of like made the realization and it was, we are jumping from time to time from, you know, when, the, when the sisters and G are little to high school to current now them as adults, those are really the three time zones or time periods, but I think it's because it's maybe I'm just dumb, but because it's like. 2002 to 2018 i was like oh wait <laughs> i'm so confused <laughs> there's 16 years difference here <laughs> what i would have really yeah. liked I, and because I, I agree with you what i would have really liked is at the start of each chapter if there had been a timeline and they had had like the three like or three or four important years and if they had highlighted mm -hmm. on the timeline in that chapter where we were where in the we story. Were. Yeah. Yeah. Because then because then it got even more confusing because you got into the months where it was like October. Yeah. Exactly. And I was like, okay, so at least it was so it was linear. Once we got halfway through, once like the play started, it was like, okay, we're pretty linear now, thank God. But like yeah. I think also like it probably didn't help that the last book we read it like at the top of each chapter was a giant word that said the character <laughs> that we were about to read as. <laughs> so <laughs> there was no question. There um, was no question. I I think it's interesting that you talked about 
um, like the school play thing not coming up. I I would have liked the pacing to be a little bit different. I did find that mm. it it did take a while to be introduced to all of the characters and all of the yeah. circumstances. I think that that could have. I I don't know. I th- I wish that it had happened either earlier in the book or we had gotten there a little bit more quickly. Um, but I also don't want to take away from from the backstories of the characters because I think that the information that we learned leading up to it was really important. I just, I felt like as I was reading it, I was like, well, when are we going to get to the part with the school play? When are we going to get to the part with the integration? It, I mean, it takes up to page one Oh seven to do the integration. Mm -hmm. And that was like the town hall where they, are like all the parents are talking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it was, I think like it was a guessing game for me. Like, okay, who are the two moms that are going to be fighting again? <laughs> like on those first hundred pages of like, okay, who's, okay, I'm tracking. Who am I tracking? Um, But specifically with the play, because that did feel kind of like a third act thing of mm-hmm. like, let's add the play now, which is just funny because I've mostly used to, if people are going to do the story in a story situation, that's usually like the full conceit of the book. So it was kind of interesting to be like, Oh, this is just a third act like device to get action going. So that was very like, Oh, it doesn't have to be the whole thing of the play. Like it doesn't have to be kiss me, Kate, (laughs) you know, (laughs) it's like, Oh, okay. I, can I say, um, when we got the description of Jade at the town hall, when I was reading it, mm-hmm. I was like, this is Naima from cycle four of America's next top model. <laughs> oh my God. That's so dumb. Naima, the one who was able to open, um, who was it? Who sell in South Africa? <laughs> Oh, Do you remember? Uh, was it was it Nelson Mandela? <laughs> yes, it was and, Nelson and she Mandela. got to open it and not Kenya. And not Kenya. <laughs> That's what this m- book should have been about. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <sighs> I will say the last thing that I I was sticky with too was just the. I don't know. Like, yes, I did cut. I understand what Nelson went through. I I just really, I was just really bummed. I think that's what it was. I was just really bummed at like how it panned out because I really thought that like Nelson could kind of like, I don't know. Well, he was Claudia. I wish that that relationship. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I just wish they could have made it work. Um, but I think that is what's beautiful about the book is that like relationships may come at like the right time, you know, at the right moment. Mm-hmm. And I think it was really nice at the end when like when they were at Diane's wedding, they were still able to kind of like be amiable in some yeah. way, you know, yeah. like obviously Noel was very sarcastic, but like I think they they are bonded by how important what they went through in high school was that Mm -hmm. I think they'll always have that. And it doesn't have to be, it's not a promise, even though they, you know, people were saying like, you know, you guys were like, you know, the, like the poster child for like, this whole like, yes, the golden couple. So like, I think it's that idea of like, we don't have to hold on to things that we don't, that we don't have to hold on to things. You can still hold on to the like important memories, but it doesn't like, it's not absolute, you know? So, I think what really what really got me, what made me cry even harder when I was already crying. Do you cry at books or is that I mean I just get really like never fully comes out tears, but just okay. get really like emotional and huffy. I get okay. very huffy. I not with this particular book, but there have been times when I've been reading when I've had to stop reading because I was crying so hard. So that's just a fun tidbit about me. Um, but yeah. what, what really got me and what I think kind of, to me, I don't know. I think the whole thing with Noel was that 
be, her being with Nelson, she realized that she was essentially her mother, where she was in this relationship where her entire identity, all of her <clears throat> hopes and dreams were wrapped up with this man. And this man. And and I think what was great was that she was then when they divorced, that she was able to take the time to figure out who she was. And And then that scene when they're at the wedding and they're dancing and she says, you know, I just can't believe that you still can't see who you are. And he looks at her and she kind of like shakes her head and she's like, it's not my job anymore. I can't tell you. And I think that's that's what it was, is that they had wrapped Mm -hmm. themselves up in each other and they didn't know who they were without the other. And she was able to do that work and to figure that out. And he was still trying to get there. Doing it. He's still mm-hmm. trying to get there. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I know that's always like a thing with like high school relationships, right? Like it's like, is it even worth investing in a relationship where, you know, people are still half baked at this point mm-hmm. and like y- you haven't been given the time. And there are people, I mean, I have friends that are still together from high school, but like they, my parents. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like there's just there has to be there has you yeah you have to be able to form your own self um regardless of of your whoever your companion is so i think i also just think it's funny that like her version of like living my best self is like running a theater in a coastal town mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Just like so beautiful, and you're like, oh my god, the postcards! Oh, yes. the postcards must be beautiful. Uh, the color palette, <laughs> the color palettes, the oh, linens that she must Who- wear. Well, to wrap up, um, I want to say that what's mine is yours was a lovely kind of like intricate story of how these two families intertwined, and it definitely like kept me interested as as we delved into the smaller kind of like branches of the main story because i think that's that's what hard sometimes about these stories that are very um that are these like intertwining stories sometimes you know there are pieces that you're like i don't need to know this but uh the author did a very good job of making sure that every nugget that you get will pay off if not to just kind of like help deepen your understanding of even the smallest uh, interactions and conversations that end up happening in the mo- in the book. So, what was your biggest takeaway? That identity is fluid. Oh, like there's the route of like the Lacey May route, right? Where it's like, no, this is the identity that my whole family will prescribe to. Mm-hmm. And there's the like. You could even say like the Nelson identity where it's like I'm kind of like creating my own type thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I I and with identity, like not realizing how much like things that kind of like may have happened subversively in like your upbringing or like trauma mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. you didn't know like would would come through in how you define yourself later on. Who you are is not predetermined. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm so glad that you recommended this book, Allie, because it. (laughs) I'm so glad that Jenna Bush Hager recommended this book. (laughs) Oh, my God. All right. Well, if you're listening, thank you so much for joining us. Yes, read with Jenna. Thank you for joining us this episode of The Popsicle. If you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and comment below and let us know what you think about what's mine and yours. And if you're listening to us on the podcast, make sure you leave us a rating or review. Tell me what you think of the show and what you'd like to hear more in the future. Okay, I am picking the book this time and our next book will be called, uh, will be Good Company by Cynthia Dupree Sweeney. Um, it's, it's also centered around a theater Okay. Theater people. Oh, good company. So double meaning. Theater... Yes. Love yes. It. There's like a theater company involved. So mm-hmm. also a read with Jenna pick. So I guess <laughs> we're just going through <laughs> Jenna's list. <laughs> I love it. I love this for us. <laughs> she's just, you know, she's on the pulse. What can I tell yes. you? <laughs> yes. 
Uh, Ali, let us know where uh, people can find you these days. Yes, you Harry, Harry Potter and the Anxious Millennials. We uh, drop a new episode every Monday. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, wherever you find your podcasts. And you can find us on social at HP Anxious. Check that Twitter if you want to see some great Harry Potter memes. Let's put a date on the episode for the next book. It'll come out on June 24th. Okay. So for us, we have one, two, three, four, like five weeks to read it because we'll probably record it like a week before. But if you listeners want to listen to a riveting conversation, um, you have until June 24th to read it. That's when the episode will drop for our next book club. Uh, you can find me, RJ, at RJ Food Rocks on all of your social media and my YouTube channel, RJ Food Rocks, premieres a new video every week. The Popsicle is part of the Ampliverse. Find all of our shows on theampliverse.com. Thank you so much for listening. This has been The Popsicle. Bye. Bye. Bye.